Hello, my lovely little coffee beans. We have got ourselves a collab. In today's video, we are going to be reading books based off of prompts given to me by Vanessa, aka Read with Dr. B. Go sub to her if you haven't already. She's literally the sweetest and she does reading sprints all the time. So if that's something you're into, definitely recommend. But also, if you want to see the prompts I gave her, I'll leave the link to her video down below. Without further ado, let's just dive right in. We are going to be reacting to the first video that Vanessa sent me, my first prompt, to pick my first book because I'm literally so excited to just begin. We shall see what I'm gonna be reading first. Here we go, here we go. It's now or never. Hi Sarah, it's me. Vanessa, Hi. And I'm so excited to do this video with you because it's gonna be a fun time. So to kick off, what I would like for you to read first is the last book that you bought or that someone bought you because I know both you and I are guilty of this but we tend to buy books and then we put them on the shelves yes we do and we don't read them until maybe years later sometimes so <laughs> pick the last book that you bought or that even someone bought you maybe as a gift and read that come back to me when you're done so I have since consulted my Goodreads. So the last book that I received slash books, cause it was two in one package, were The Fake Out by Stephanie Archer. I loved Behind the Net literally so much. I was kicking my feet screaming. I was reading it fully on my Sunday sprints and people were like, you good Sarah? Because every single time I was sprinting, I was just giggling and just covering my face, having the best time ever. So I wanted to read the second book. So I'm really excited about this book. So we could pick this or the other book that I bought at the same time that honestly, like I'm excited to read the fake out. Don't get me wrong, but I'm super effing stoked for this book. So I think I'm gonna go with this one <laughs> out of the two. It's a book that like I was patiently waiting for midnight on release day to hit because it's an indie romance. I have to wait till the actual release day to order the paperback because the paperbacks aren't available until release day. So then I had to wait to get the paperback days after it was actually released. I could have read it on KU, but I just didn't, whatever. But I thought I was gonna read it the day that I received it in the mail, but I just didn't. And I was gonna read it for another video, didn't happen, but we're gonna read it for this video. I was giving an option by giving you both books that I got, but I'm going with this one. And that book is <laughs> The Pucking Wrong Date by C.R. Jane. The way this series has me in a chokehold, okay? And now the fourth book has been announced. I just never want the series to end. The first book, The Pucking Wrong Number, four stars, absolutely unhinged. The second book, The Pucking Wrong Guy, 4.5 stars, literally so good. And now this one, I wanna read it so bad, so we're going to. Sorry, the fake out, that's, th you're just too fluffy for me. I don't need a fluffy romance, I need this. This is what I need. I am so glad that I finally have an excuse to read this. So let's just dive right in. pages into the pucking wrong date and walker is wild the shit he pulls just straight out the gate had my mouth agape okay so i'm really curious to see where it goes from this point on like if his mission is a success or not he just wants her so bad but okay so in this book we follow walker who's the goalie for the la hockey team but he is head over heels for this girl that he sees at one of his hockey games at the very beginning of the book, like literally looks at her in the stands and is like, you're mine. And her name is, what's her actual name? Cause I know that she tells him a fake name cause she's famous. So her name is actually Olivia and 
She's like a broken pop star who's under a conservatorship. So very like Britney Spears-esque. Her mom and her creepy as fuck agent basically were like, huh, you're not well. Cause she wanted to stop performing and like take a little bit of time off. She's a singer, if I didn't say that. And she wanted to take a break and they're like, no, you're not gonna do that. So they drugged her and then they made it seem like she was on tons of drugs and like just way out of her mind. So she had to stay in a mental hospital and then they took her to court and now she's under a conservatorship. So she has no rights or no like control over her assets or her body or literally anything. So she goes out to her cousin's hockey game and that's when she sees Walker. And then they have like a one night stand type of situation. And then, yeah, things just go from there, obviously. But, Walker? I don't know, okay? I don't know right now. I can't really say if he's my favorite out of the three guys we've met so far. But, he's like a different type of unhinged. Like, Lincoln was overbearing in his unhingedness. So, it was like, whoa. But, Ari, who's the second book, the fucking wrong guy, I think he still stands as my favorite but we'll see what Walker does next and <laughs> see if that changes. I am back with an update. I don't like this. Is this too tall? Way too tall. Hey, I have since finished the fucking wrong date. I think the last time I updated you guys, I was 130 pages in and I ended up binging pretty much the rest of it, but I was binging it up until the classic literature sprint that happened last night. So I had about 100 pages left when I was about to go to bed and I was gonna go to bed without reading the last little bit, but I was like, no, I gotta know what happened. So I stayed up way past my bedtime and I was paying for it this morning. Let me just tell you that. Cause I went to sleep at like literally almost 2 AM and I have to wake up at 5.45 for work every day. So let me stop playing with my hair. Thoughts on the fucking wrong date. I really liked this. Walker is so, I wouldn't even say unhinged. Like he's kind of psycho. And the things that he does to keep Olivia is just, bonkers but like why did i like it there were certain things that he was doing specifically to basically trap her okay against her judgment no she didn't know about it the other two books let me just say this really quick this is like not a spoiler but at the same time it could be leading to a spoiler so if you don't want to know like anything then just skip ahead a little bit but in the other two books right the guys are unhinged af like they're willing to admit that and then they do a bunch of shit to get the girl, right? And they like basically trick the girls into falling for them. And then by the time they're like, they've already fallen in love with them. So they're gonna forgive them for all the shit that they did to get them, you know what I mean? And there's like this moment in the book where it's like make or break. And then they confess all of their sins basically. But in this one, he told her like half of the truth that was going on, but like everything else that he did, he never disclosed to her. So it's just interesting because the other two books, they literally are like, yeah, you're right. I did trick you into doing this. No, he never even tells her the things he did to get them to be together forever. I mean, all's fair in love and war, I guess, but I don't know. I don't know. Like, why was I giggling at some of the stuff he was doing? Because if I were to spill the things he was doing, I was even talking to them backstage after sprints last night, uh, just like spilling all the tea on what he was doing to her to like keep her, basically. And um, they were like, that is literally terrible. That's terrifying. And like, why are you enjoying it? And I don't know. I literally don't know what to rate this because like I said, I finished it last night, but I've been thinking about it all day. And the, w I can't even say, but I was originally going to give it a four, but I'm like, is it a 4.5? Like if I can't stop thinking about it, the answer is probably no, because I still don't love fame in books, specifically singers or musician type fame books. So Olivia, the FMC being a singer was just kind of like, not annoying, but it was just, oh, not my favorite trope. And then paired with, I can't even say, whatever. 
I'm giving this four stars. I really enjoyed it. It wasn't as hard hitting as the fucking wrong guy still. Like Ari still has such a special place in my heart and I literally love him to death even though he's crazy. But I will say that Walker kind of takes the cake. Like you read the first book, the fucking wrong number and you're like, Lincoln, he's crazy. And then you read the second book and you're like, he's a different type of crazy, but still crazy. And then you read Walker's book and you're like, they have nothing on him. <laughs> And that's just how I feel. But I am now waiting for my next prompt. I did tell Vanessa that I had finished my book and that I needed the next prompt. So I shall update you once I have it. We're back in business. Oh my God, it's literally so dark in here. But who needs to see me anyways, you know? Also, my room's kind of a mess, so don't pay attention to that. We are here and we are ready to react to our next prompt. Here we go. Hey again, Sarah. I hope that you enjoyed the book that you just read. Um, let me know if you rated it four stars or higher, I want you to click this video. If you rated it less than that, so anything like 3.9 or below, click on this video. Okay, okay, so I've got options. So our last book, I gave it four stars. So that means we're gonna go with the four stars or higher prompt, which like, is that gonna lead me to the better prompt of the two? I don't know. Okay. Girl, you loved it. Okay, so now what I want you to do is read a book that starts with the first letter of your name. So obviously an S. Because if you were a book, you'd definitely be a five star. I love getting compliments. Okay, that's kind of funny. I mean, not to give any spoilers for the prompts that I gave her, but it kind of aligns with one of the prompts that I gave her. But okay, S. I have a lot of books that start with S. So what do I do? <laughs> What do I do? There are so many books on my physical TBR and just in general that start with S. It's so broad that it's hard. I wish that it were more specific, but at the same time, it's like, then it's up to me if the book is bad because I have all these books to choose from. But what if I choose wrong? Yikes. I am gonna think about it <laughs> and maybe even give a couple of options and then decide on the spot. Be right back. Okay, I'm back and I did turn on the light this time. <laughs> I can't make a decision for the life of me. I have too many books to start with S, so I'll just throw out a couple right now. I kind of want to switch up genres. I've been reading a lot of romance recently, specifically leaning more towards dark romances, but like that seems to be all I'm in the mood for these days, so I don't know if I should continue to do that or if I should try to read another genre. I mean, I've been reading like literary fiction kind of too. Mm, not really, I don't know. All I'm in the mood for, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at is dark romance. So I kind of don't want to pick a dark romance for this to get me out of my little comfort bubble, but if it happens, it happens. The two romances that I have are Sicko by Ammo Jones, and I have that on my Kindle. Sicko would be dark. And then I have So Not Meant to Be by Megan Quinn, which I didn't love the first book in the series, but I want to continue on. And this is the next book, and it starts with an S. So moving on from the romance genre, we have Sister Maiden Monster by Lucy A. Schneider. Um, Liz. AKA Museum Grack Reads read this and wants me to read it. I don't remember if she liked it or not, but I remember that she wanted me to read it and like get my thoughts on it. So it's an option. And then Speak of the Devil by Rose Wilding. I have this like special edition copy with the sprayed edges and the sticker that I haphazardly took off and it's signed. I got this a while back. A while back meaning probably like mid last year, but it sounds really cool and it's a thriller and I haven't really read any thrillers as of late. Takes an ax to toxic masculinity. I mean, it sounds kind of good to me. So we have that and then lastly we have Stolen Tongues by Felix Blackwell. And this I tried to read over a year ago, I think during a 24 hour readathon. I'm not gonna lie, I got a little spooked from just the prologue, so I stopped reading it. It was pitch black during the readathon when I was trying to read this and I scared myself. I'd like to finish it someday. I mean, I'll be restarting it, obviously. I don't know, am I in the mood for a horror? Am I in the mood for a thriller? Am I in the mood for a sci-fi horror? 
or I think that's what that is. Am I in the mood for a fluffy rom-com, basically? Or am I in the mood for a dark romance? I have quite literally picked a book from every genre. Not purpose purposely, purposefully, whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. I don't know, or should I like pick a literary fiction? I have a couple of those. I just don't think my thoughts would be very great <laughs> for those. Cause I have, let's see. As I just continue to pick more books, I don't need to pick more books. I'm like, let me just throw a couple more in there. Why not? Second Place by Rachel Cusk. Been really wanting to read Rachel Cusk and this is the only one that I own from her, but I don't know, am I in the mood for it? That's the whole thing. <laughs> going crazy over this prompt. Like it's such an easy prompt but I just can't make up my damn mind. And then we have Sad Girls by Lang Leave. Love? Leave? Which would be a let's sit and annotate type of book. I mean same for second place. So do I want to annotate right now? Oh my god. Maybe I just need to take a shower and figure my shit out and then come back to you once I've made a decision. <laughs> so annoyed. <laughs> I literally can't find a book that I like. The last time you saw me, I was frantically trying to pick just one book that started with an S. And I did start a book days ago now. I started Sister Maiden Monster by Lucy A. Schneider and I got about 50% into it, put it down, never went back to it. I could still pick it up, but like I was gonna give a 50% update, but then I realized I really couldn't explain to you what was going on or if I was liking it or not because I really didn't know, but I guess the fact that I put it down five-ish days ago now and haven't really had the desire to come back to it kind of tells you everything you need to know. Not that I was hating it, it was just like I could simply walk away from this and never care if I finished it, if that makes sense. But I've just been feeling off kilter for the past couple of days and like really just tired all the time. I don't know, but something's going on and I haven't had the desire to read. I mean, I'm also depressed, but like that's a constant thing. So <laughs> I don't think that's really causing me to not read anything. But also like obviously with depression comes uninterest and things that you to enjoy yada 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 okay whatever so today i decided to just start another book that starts with this to get to my next prompt because apparently this just isn't the prompt for me so i picked up second place you can't even see it okay here's the dust jacket second place by rachel cuss and i'm like 15 pages into it and i could not care less about what's happening and again i don't know if this comes back to the fact that i'm just not in the mood to read right now or just not in the mood for this type of book or the book is bad also side I know the font in this book is the weirdest font I've ever seen in a book and it's really throwing me off it's not even that weird like it's not written in like gothic font it's just the way that my eyes cringe when I look at these pages like I don't even know if you can really tell you probably can't you're probably like Sarah you're tripping don't read the words obviously but I'm just trying to show you the font like why is the font pissing me off why is everything pissing me off why do I not want to read <sighs> I don't know what's happening. But now I'm like, okay, since I'm already 50% into Sister Maiden Monster, I could just pick that back up and finish it, even though I'm probably gonna not like it in the end and probably not have that much to say about it because I don't really know what's going on. I, I can't really explain it to anyone else if I don't understand it myself. So yeah, but I kind of just don't want to pick another book to start. And like starting a book is always the hardest part. So I'm already into that book. So I should just finish it, right? I think that's that's what I'm gonna do. So I decided to pick Sister Made a Monster back up today and I just finished it. Do I know what the hell is going on in this book? No. Can I explain anything to you about it? No. Can I tell you my rating of it? Sure. One star. I... <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to feel. I don't really want to say anything more. Just one star. Look at Goodreads if you're interested in learning more about it, I guess, but you're not gonna get a very um, well thought out review from me. I hate reading right now. I hate it. <laughs> Like, I hope our next prompt leads me to a great book because I really need that right now. <laughs> oh, apparently I don't know how to balance a camera. Oh wait, I could put a bookmark. There we go. All right, prompt number three, here we go. Welcome back. Okay, so did that last book that you read either have an animal on the cover or in the book? If so, click this video. If not, click this one. <laughs> 
I had zero reaction at all to that because I'm really just trying to think of the cover of Sister Made a Monster. I mean, it has an octopus on it. That's an animal, right? That's an animal. I mean, it's aquatic animal, but it's an animal, so that counts. Whatever. Okay, animal. So the answer is yes, there is an animal. So let's go to that option. Okay, so your book had an animal in it or on the cover. I would like you to read another book now with a character that has golden retriever energy. Enjoy. Okay. Golden Retriever energy. That can mean so many things. I definitely am going to read a romance for this and literally so excited to read a romance after the travesty that was... Sorry, I'm trying to put my headphones back. After the travesty that was Sister Maiden Monster. So we're gonna do a fluffy contemporary romance, but... We just gotta pick. We just gotta narrow it down to one. I'll come back with some options. I'm back. That was fast. I have already picked the book. So the book that I'm gonna be reading for this prompt is Final Offer by Lauren Asher. I've been meaning to read this book for a while. Also, I don't know necessarily if he has Golden Retriever energy, but I was doing a little researching and it showed up on two separate lists. So I'm gonna trust the people and that they didn't steer me wrong. Reading the description, it doesn't really sound like he has golden retriever energy like the the description of the book the final offer is not really lining up with how he was acting in terms and conditions in my opinion because i remember him being besties with whoever the main character of terms and conditions was the the fmc don't know don't care i gave that book two stars but it would have been a one star if it weren't for cal so like high hopes question mark i don't know it could be my favorite in the series and even it being like a three star would still make it my fave in the series because the first book I gave one star second book two stars but again would have been one star if it weren't for Cal so maybe Cal is it for me maybe he's the one I guess we'll see hello so I'm back with an update started final offer today while I was at work I was listening to the audiobook and I'm now 79% of the way in which is so annoying like why is it not 80 anyways but literally why is she so annoying why why is she making me want to like punch her in the the freaking face like the thing that just happened really had me screaming at my audiobook in the car because i was also listening to it on my drive home from work um <laughs> just I can't with her I can't with her this whole time I've been like okay yeah it's fine everything's fine like he's fine right but she just grinds my gears and also it's the way that this book has one of my least favorite tropes in it and I was unaware of that fact before going in I don't even think it was in the synopsis because I did read the synopsis right before I read this to make sure it was golden retriever which is funny also because I was going back and forth this whole time about if it was golden retriever mm uh, hello if he he was a golden retriever and they literally said it even in the book so the way that i can't remember the girl's name i can't remember her because she irks me so bad what is her name la it starts with that l or like her full name doesn't is it alana i think it's alana i think it's alana yeah okay it's <laughs> that is so that was humbling okay her name is Alana, but he calls her Lana. They're not on good terms when he calls her Alana and not Lana. Whatever. Whatever doesn't matter. <laughs> what matters is that Lana is not my favorite person ever. Cal is fine. I mean, he's kind of cute, but what was I saying? <laughs> oh, I was saying that her and some other person were having this conversation and they're like, oh yeah, your boy almost like punched this guy in the face. And she was like, what? But like, he's such a golden retriever. Like he wouldn't do something like that. And I was like, literally use the words golden retriever so it's perfect for this prompt but I don't think it's gonna get anything higher than maybe a 3.5 I don't know she just really irks me she really irks me and like I said it has one of my least favorite tropes in it so that's annoying and every single time that a spicy scene happens I'm just like listening to it like I don't know what it is about Lauren Asher's writing, but I just can't get behind the spicy scenes. I don't know if it's because I'm just like not really sold on the chemistry between the characters or what, but I'm just like, can we skip this part? I almost did skip one of <laughs> the spicy scenes because I was just like, I'm not in this. I don't want to be in this. I don't want to be involved in this. This doesn't need to be me listening to them right now. And it's not because it's an audiobook because I very often listen to 
smutty audiobooks. It's just something about, I don't know, I don't know. And even in terms and conditions, the second book, I wanted to skip the spicy scenes. And the first two books I didn't listen to, I read them physically. So it's nothing to do with the audiobook at all. It's just the way that the chemistry doesn't translate to me being invested in them having any type of physical connection. Does that make sense? I don't think it makes sense, but it's whatever. It's my opinion and you can take it or leave it but I am probably going to finish this soon I don't know if I'm gonna continue reading right now but I'll definitely finish it before the night arrives and she already sent me the next prompt so once I finish this book I can immediately watch and react to prompt number four we are getting down to it but I really want to have this vlog finished by Sunday night fingers crossed so that way I can start a new vlog on Monday that is the plan at least will things go according to plan it's me so like not safe to say but the update on final offer is that I'm almost done with it. I have like about 150 pages left, I think. And it's fine, but it's nothing amazing. But I'm definitely liking it more than the first two books. That's for sure. But I just think that I probably would have liked it more without a certain trope, which I do say it's one of my least favorite tropes. But at the same time, I say that very loosely because it won't stop me from reading a book ever. It just makes me less inclined to pick the book up and or go going in knowing that it's not going to be a five star. It tempers my expectations is basically what I'm trying to get at. But I do read a lot of this trope. So I can't say I hate it. It's just one of my least favorite tropes. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to finish the book and I'll update you once I have. just now finished Final Offer by Lauren Asher. Before I give you my rating, let me just give you my thoughts. Literally, Alana could not be more annoying to me and she killed the book for me. Also, what killed my enjoyment of the book was the conflict. I just can't, like, I get it. He has his vices, right? Like, he has his issues, but he was never, ever mean, disrespectful, or treated you poorly. Like, it just didn't make any sense. And then the way she just flipped so hard when the crux of the issue came about, right? I mean, I'm trying not to give anything away, but as soon as this thing happened, she just does a 180. Like, she's always so willing to fully give up on him. And it's so, like, obviously you don't like him as much as you think you do if you're just willing to walk away from him all the time. It just... It made me so angry. I'm, I'm just like, maybe he deserves better than you because you are shitty and you don't deserve him. Sorry. But yeah, it's just, it's very annoying. I get when you bring somebody else in. <laughs> I don't, it's not in the synopsis, so I don't want to say it. The problem that he has like his drinking problem is obviously a problem right i'm not negating that fact i'm just saying that she was just so not understanding of it and like point blank period if you have to change things about someone in order for you to love them or whatever the case may be i feel like you just don't love them enough like if you just can't take someone as they are flaws and all obviously there's such a thing as like wanting someone to grow and wanting someone to change for the better but like if 
if you can't accept someone fully for who they are with every single flaw that they have, then it's a no for me. I don't support their romance, so it made it really hard for me to root for them the entire way through. I don't know. Maybe people will disagree with me and that they think that his drinking problem was really that much of a problem, but to me, I'm just like, yes, yes it is a problem, but it was just harped on so heavily and like not in the most sensitive of ways, I guess. So I just, point being, I just didn't like their relationship. I didn't want them to be together and that never changed throughout the entire book. With all that being said, my rating is a two star. And again, two stars just for Cal because he deserves it. I love Cal so much. He deserves the world. He deserves better than Alana, even though, you know, he loves her, all that kind of stuff, gross. <laughs> I don't agree, but whatever. And it just got so cheesy towards the end too. And I just, I don't like it. I just don't like the way Lauren Asher writes. For the first two books, it was, I just don't like the way Lauren Asher writes men. But then for this one, it's, I didn't like the way that she wrote the FMC. So maybe I just don't believe in the romances that Lauren Asher provides us. And that's okay. This will be the last Lauren Asher book that I pick up. I'm never gonna pick up another one and that's fine. I mean, I'm glad that I just finished the series and I don't have to do anything else. I'm not gonna read Love Redesign even though everyone seems to be reading that and loving it, but a lot of people loved this series. So I guess Lauren Asher just isn't for me and that's a-okay. But I do have the next prompt. So maybe I should just go ahead and react to that since I'm already here. Thankfully I have my AirPods next to me this time. Let's go ahead and react to our second to last prompt. Okay, Sarah, I have a simple question for you. Did you enjoy this book? If yes, click this one. If no, click this video. I mean, I think it's pretty safe to say that my answer is gonna be no. So let's go to that prompt. Well, bummer, you didn't enjoy that book. Anyways, read a book that's been hyped up all over social media. Have fun. You're joking you're joking so like there's tons of books that i could read for this right but the one that i almost bought on amazon today but i didn't because i want to go in person to go get it is bride by ali hazelwood listen i never thought in my life that i would pick up another ali hazelwood actually this is a really bad idea it's a really bad idea because i keep saying the same thing about lauren asher and then i keep reading her books and then keep being disappointed so maybe bride isn't the move i guess i'll have to go on instagram and see what comes up the most it's gonna be bride but i can't read bride can i i'm gonna consult instagram and come back so i'm feeling like absolute dog shit right now but i was gonna just jump into a clip of me reading the next book and decided against that and that i should probably introduce what i'm gonna be reading next especially since i did a poll to see what i should read the two books that i keep seeing are bride by ali hazelwood and powerless by lauren roberts but i'm not really in the mood or headspace to be reading powerless because i want to take my time with that one and annotate it and all that so not gonna be doing that and then bride i don't want another two star i went with two other books that i've been seeing a lot i couldn't decide between the two so i posted a poll on instagram and the two choices i gave were done and dusted by lila sage because the second book just came out swift and saddled so technically i've been seeing that one more but obviously it's in the same series and i have been seeing done and dusted around pretty much the same amount so i gave that as an option i wasn't showing the book covers i basically gave a color for each i'll insert a picture here as to what the story looked like to give you a point of reference but um my second option has been winning by a landslide since i posted it and it's a book that i mentioned at the beginning of this video and didn't read so i'm pretty sure that you can guess what the book is but we are going to be reading the fake out by stephanie archer and i'm really excited i've been like i said i was excited to read this it was just the pucking wrong date was calling my name just a little bit more but i'm really excited to read this one so i'm glad that it won and also i just want to point out earlier that i did say i don't necessarily like musicians or like singers in books when the first book in this series behind the net that i gave five stars the fmc in that one was a singer so i'm not saying i hate the trope clearly i'm just saying it's very hit or miss for me and can sometimes make me more annoyed with the story or not want to give it a five star but i just thought i would mention that 
Uh, because when I was about to start this book, I was like, wait a second, I gave Behind the Net five stars and she's a singer. So you kind of effed up with that one. <laughs> but okay, here we go. This is probably like the worst camera angle I've ever attempted, but we're just gonna roll with it. Also, I literally just woke up and I have to get ready for sprints soon because it's Sunday, but I really wanted to update you on the fake out. <laughs> and by update you, I mean tell you that I finished it. Um, I feel bad that I didn't get the chance to, well, I could have if I wanted to. Like she could have if she wanted. I didn't, okay? My eyes and hands were glued to my Kindle as soon as I started this, I did not read the physical copy that I'm holding right now as basically a prop. But I literally, once I started this, I couldn't stop. I don't know what Stephanie Archer puts in her books, but like they just hit every time. I don't know if it's because it's a hockey romance and like hockey romances are my sweet spot, but like she's now an auto buy author for me, for sure. I just can't, I was actually kicking my feet. I was actually giggling. I was actually squealing and I, I was having such visceral reactions to their banter, to their freaking chemistry, dude. Like their chemistry was unmatched and they're just so perfect for each other. And I literally could like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I can't, I can't, I can't. Sorry if I'm being so annoying right now. I can't form a coherent thought. Okay. It's just Rory and Hazel are end game. No one can convince me otherwise. And he's so sweet to her and she like literally, but it's not just a cutesy romance. Not that that's a bad thing, but there was also explorations of like toxic exes. There was explorations of complex family dynamics. Like you get all of that in here. I even teared up in this book. Happy tears, but tears nonetheless. Well, not actual tears, but tearing up, but whatever. Happy tearing up. <laughs> I don't, I, <laughs> like I'm so glad that this won the poll first and foremost. I haven't had a five star in almost a month. I don't think. I was just like, there's no hope for me anymore apparently, but Stephanie Archer gave me hope five stars do exist. And I encourage you to pick up Behind the Net and The Fake Out. I can't even decide which one I like more. They're both so good. I was worried that this wouldn't live up to Behind the Net, but like they're on par with each other. If you loved Behind the Net, you're gonna love The Fake Out. I said what I said and I mean it with my whole chest. I've never highlighted a book so much on my Kindle. No, I'm saying no annotations. Pound no, bitch, you know there are annotations. Bro, 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 bro. You can't do this to me. It's literally saying no annotations found. I'm about to riot. Where's my Kindle? It just won't go as fast on my Kindle, but it's fine. You'll still get the idea. Oh, they're loading. Just give them a second. They're a lot. I know, bro. Bro, literally, literally, literally. Don't look that close. Hold on. Don't look too closely, but like... astronomical and I can't express that to you because my freaking phone won't load. I look like a gremlin. Why is it literally saying no annotations found though? This is really pissing me off. Like girl, you know that I highlighted it. Girl, you know. Like why does it say that? Why is it gaslighting me right now? Whatever. Okay, anyway, five stars. I gotta get ready for my sprints. Well actually no, I have a little bit of time so why don't we just go ahead and react to our very last prompt. I literally DM'd Vanessa at like 3 a.m last night once I finished this and said, hey, I'm ready for my next prom. I did not expect her to respond until like hours later, but I woke up this morning for no reason at like 7 a.m. and I already had a response. Last prompt, here we go. Okay, last prompt, welcome back. So I think that you'll enjoy this last one. You may have a hard time deciding, Fuck. but no, now I, I want you to put any five books on a spinner wheel and read the one that the spinner wheel chooses. I hope that you get something good. Bless, bless the ground Vanessa walks on. I couldn't be more happy with that prompt, honestly. When she said, you might have a hard time deciding, absolutely not. I don't need that stress right now, but I do have at least five books that I'm interested in reading like at this very moment. 
So, oh my god. And again, again, not to give you spoilers, it kind of lines up with a prompt or two that I gave her. So, interesting. But I am gonna make the spinner wheel. I'll show me spinning it, so don't worry about that. I'm sorry that I'm the worst vlogger in the world, but I guess I'll see you when I've made my spinner wheel. I'm back with my finished wheel and it was much harder to pick the books for the wheel than I thought so Vanessa was definitely right because I'm like okay do I go with a certain theme do I just pick what I'm in the mood for right now do I pick a book in every genre to switch it up no we're just gonna go with what I think is right and here is what I think is right so I'm gonna pop up the wheel right here but I put Akafas on there because I am currently doing the House of Mass read-along with Catherine, Christine, and Steph, and that's the next book that I have to read. So I figured required reading should go on here somewhere. And then we have Done and Dusted by Lila Sage because apparently I just really am in the mood to read that book right now and it lost the poll. So like this is just another chance. I'm leaving it up to fate to pick this book again. And if it doesn't, then it's just not the right time and that's fine. Then Juniper Hill because it's green. And hey, it's St. Patrick's Day today. But yeah, I just wanted to maybe read a green book and that actually is the case for these last two books too. Uh, Lucky Cupid by Sarah Blue. Picked that again because it's St. Patrick's Day and it's a novella. The only novella here. Well, I guess Akafas is kind of, but um, don't know what it's about, but it's a St. Patrick's Day novella. That's all you need to know. And then we have lastly Devil of Dublin by B.B. Easton. And again, I picked this because it has clovers on the cover. Very St. Patty's Day-esque and I want it to be on theme with the day. So we're gonna go ahead and spin the wheel and see what I'm going to be reading today. No, you're joking. No, you're joking. The way that I wanted it to be done and dusted so bad and it almost was. I'm devastated. <sighs> but it's fine. I can read Akafas. <laughs> it's fine. I don't think it'll take me that long to get through, and also it's required reading. Like, I have to read it, so perfect. <laughs> but yeah, Akafas, here we go. here. So I cannot use the little review I did of A Court of Frost and Starlight and I also can't use my final clip of the video being the little recap of everything I read and obviously saying goodbye. So we're gonna do that now. I ended up giving A Court of Frost and Starlight three stars. I thought it was fine for what it was. It was short, it was sweet, it was kind of sad actually, but it was a nice little vague hay from everything that was going on in Akawar, a nice little reprieve if you will. And I thought it was fun because we got multiple perspectives rather than just having to listen to Feyre for hundreds and hundreds of pages. Also, it's the shortest in the series, so that's a huge plus as well. But to recap everything that I read in this video, our first book, The Pucking Wrong Date by C.R. Jane was a four star. Sister Maiden Monster by Lucy A. Schneider was a whopping one star. Final Offer by Lauren Asher was a two star. The Fake Out by Stephanie Archer was our saving grace with a five star. And then our last book, A Court of Frost and Starlight, was a three star. So a very mixed bag with this one. I literally had every star rating in this video, except for half stars, but you get the point. I don't think that'll ever 
happen again. So pretty cool that it did. I mean, not so much for the two in one star, but I had a fun time nonetheless. I would love to do this again. Thank you so much to Vanessa for doing this with me and I hope you all enjoyed. But with all that being said, thank you all so, so much for watching today's video. I love you all so, so much and I will see you in my next one. Bye!